All right, guys, chapter six, section four, equations involving inverse trigonometric functions. This is uh, the last section of chapter six. Okay, guys, I'm starting you out intentionally on example two and not example one. Um, we have three times arctangent of x is equal to pi. The first thing I would have you do is isolate the function arctan of x. And to do that, we may want to divide both sides by 3. All right, cool. That's from dividing both sides by 3. And you'll remember, hopefully, from 6.1, that this notation means that pi over 3 is the angle whose tangent is x. Pi over 3 is the angle whose tangent is x. In other words, we can rewrite this as tangent x is equal to tangent of pi over 3 right? And then we know that tangent of pi over 3 is root 3. So then this is our final answer, root 3. Okay. All right, good job, you guys. That's the first one. It's pretty straightforward as long as you remember what this notation means, right? Arc 10 of x is pi over 3 means that pi over 3 is the angle whose tangent gives me x. Let's look at the next example. All right. Inverse secant of x is equal to inverse cosecant of 2. All right, I'm going to introduce um, a strategy that we actually used uh, back in 6.1, and that is I'm going to um, suggest that we make a substitution. I'm going to suggest that we let, I don't know, some letter, let's just say u, let, it doesn't have to be u, okay, but let u equal inverse cosecant of 2, the right-hand side of that equation. That would imply that cosecant of u, let me write that better for us, yeah? Uh, cosecant of u is equal to 2. Now, do you remember the range for inverse cosecant? The range is the same as, uh, for the most part, the, in, the, the range for the inverse sine, which is negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2, um, excluding 0. And so basically quadrant 1 or quadrant 4 uh, because this value here is positive, we know we're in quadrant number 1. So I'm going to draw a triangle in quadrant 1. And this is my um, angle u. And cosecant of u is said to be 2 over, it's said to be 2, or 2 over 1, right? And so cosecant of u will have us uh, locate the... Uh, or identify the uh, sides of the triangle like this. Cosecant of u, remember cosecant is hypotenuse over opposite. And so by the Pythagorean theorem, we know that this adjacent side here is a square root of uh, two squared minus one squared, or the square root of four minus one, which is a square root of three, right? So now we can go to our original statement here, this one up here, and we can say that, um, inverse secant of x is equal to u, right? That's what we, that's the substitution that you and I made um, in the beginning. So this statement now implies that u is the angle whose secant value is x. Secant of u is x, and x is what we're trying to solve for. So then that implies that x is just secant of u, which is hypotenuse, over adjacent. So then x is in a set notation and rationalized to root 3 over 3. Isn't that nice? Okay, everybody, let's go back to example 1 that we skipped for in the beginning. Um, we want to solve this um, equation, y equals 4 times tangent of 3x for x. Solve it for x. Where x is restricted to the interval negative pi over 6 to positive pi over 6. All right, let's work with this here. Um, so they gave us this equation, y equals 4 times tangent of 3x. And they said solve this for x. So I'm thinking we should divide both sides by 4 first. When you divide both sides by 4, we have this. Now, in order to solve for x here, I need inverse tangent of x, inverse tangent uh, function, right? So I am going to say that by the definition of arctangent, um, that 3x is the angle 
whose tangent is y over 4. 3x is the angle whose tangent is y over 4. Well, that's the same thing as saying that 3x is equal to arc tan of y over 4. That's what that notation means. And let us not forget, let's not forget uh, what we're solving for, which is um, x. So let's divide both sides by 3. I'm sorry, yeah, by 3, excuse me. And then we get, let me separate this board here. We get that x is equal to, uh, let's say, arc tan of y over 4. Oops, sorry. Okay, arc tan of y over 4. And then all over um, 3. You know what? That might look nicer, a little neater, if we wrote the dividing by 3 as just multiplying by 1 third. So 1 third times arc tan of y over 4 is our final answer. Okay? That's our final answer. Now, let me go ahead and box that while I'm here. There. Our final answer for x. Now, um, you may be wondering, I don't know, why they said that x is restricted to this interval. This interval here actually guarantees that we have a one-to-one -one function. Remember when we were talking about inverse functions, um, a function only has an inverse function if that function happens to be one-to-one. -one. So that's what this interval here that's given to you is um, guaranteeing. It's guaranteeing that we have something that's one-to-one, -one, a one-to-one -one correspondence. Okay, cool deal, everybody. This is the end of 6.4, as we know it. And it is also the end of chapter six. So I hope you have everything you need um, to finish all of the work for chapter six. Um, I'll catch you later, um, later in chapter seven, I guess. All right, see you later.